Hi everybody and welcome to today's live streaming episode where we're doing it live. So as you know, I'm here every day on weekdays from 6 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. to answer your questions, especially the ones that you send in, but also the ones that I deem important related to COVID-19, um, how we can be best prepared for it, how it's affecting our lives. And as well, I also discuss current affairs that are related to COVID-19 and especially in Vermont. So um, before I get started, finally today, I've had a chance to do all my research and speak with Vermont dairy farmers, and we are going to untangle this question about why are Vermont dairy farmers supposedly dumping a lot of milk. But before we get to that, I have some good news. I just learned this afternoon that the Center for Industrial Progress has endorsed my candidacy for Vermont's Lieutenant Governor, so I'm very happy to be sharing that with you. The founder is Alex Epstein, and he has written a very important book called The Moral Case for Fossil Fuels. A revised and updated 2.0 version is coming out this August. So I think it's August 11th, the same day that as the, as the primary, so keep an eye out for that. And um, his whole idea is um, promoting human flourishing. That's an idea that I support, which is how do we maximize freedom and prosperity for all Vermonters, Americans, human beings. And um, he takes on um, climate activists, ones who clearly support ideology over the best interests of individuals. He's a philosopher, uh, I think a very important thinker of our time. And I've had a really good, um, well, a, a privilege really to have a, to have a few conversations with him last year. So uh, this was really a surprise, and I'm very happy to get an endorsement for that. And uh, I, once again, I support human flourishing. I support um, prosperity and freedom, and so I'm very happy to get a validation from um, an important person, an important movement for that. Okay, so let's get into our topic for today, which is. Um, uh, something I brought up earlier this week, uh, we saw a report of um, Vermont dairy farmers dumping tons and tons of milk. It was a very shocking video. They just, you know, opened up the faucet and let it run. And I, I was horrified as were, you know, all the comments. So other people felt the same. I mean, really right now at a time where we're all confined to our spaces, children are at home, I'm sure there's, a, there's a, enough demand for milk. Well, what about, um, you know, the shelters? What about those who are homeless? I mean, there's definitely got to be a demand for it. So why are you, why are they dumping it? So um, the, the, I'm not an authority on this, but the, I think this is a very important topic. And I've, um, uh, and there's some very valid questions that a lot of Vermonters have raised that I also wanted the answers for. And so I've done my research, my, um, the, the authority on this, who is willing to, um, go on record is Peter Briggs, the owner of Briggs Farm up in Addison County. Um, the, uh, I've also done I've spoken with others and I've done my own research. So I want to be able to share important information and um, address these questions with you. And so I'm not speaking as an authority, but as someone who has researched this enough and defers to others who are in the trenches. So it, the first question, are Vermont dairy farmers actually dumping a lot of milk or is this something that always happens? So a few people have said, well, this always happens, you know, they do it all the time because there's always an oversupply of milk. So why are you making a big deal of it just because it's, you know, the COVID-19 pandemic? Well, usually on average, uh, yes, there is an oversupply of milk and um, that extra supply is dumped, but it is about six trailer loads a year. So a whole trailer load a year. Right now, what's happening is six trailer loads a week. So yes, the reports are right. A lot of milk is being dumped. Now, my, my, obviously my very first question is why are they doing that? Well, uh, Peter said this, he said, think of milk production like the Niagara Falls. You can't just shut it off overnight. So once a cow gets milking, you can't just stop it 
uh, it takes a, a while to ramp down production. So if you have an X amount of supply today, you're going to have that tomorrow and the day after and the day after that. So just because COVID-19 happened and everything has been shut down, that doesn't automatically mean that they can just turn off the faucet and you know you can adjust the production of milk. That's not gonna happen. So you've gotta understand that it takes a while to do that. And um, and now what, why has, it, why has it stopped? Well, because the two biggest sources that were consuming the milk were restaurants and school lunch programs. And as you know, because of the shutdown of the economy, we don't have restaurants and schools are out for the rest of the year. So as a result, there's just no supply for it. Now in Vermont, my understanding is that individual farms like the Briggs farm up in Addison County they're not they're not actually sending you know uh, interacting with the restaurants themselves they're not sending the milk there um, these farms are all organized into co-ops and so you send the milk to the co-op and then the co-op decides what happens and so the co-ops yes they are dumping about six trailer loads a week so the first question is, okay, well, you can't give it there. You can't give it to the places where you usually do. What about giving it to the, you know, to shelters? What about giving it to people who, you know, just give it for free, you know, don't sell it. Well, the, the main thing is that milk that's made on the farm is raw milk. It needs to be pasteurized. So for that, it needs to go to a processing unit. And there, there were a few COVID-19 positive cases in processing units as a result these processing units have been shut down and so there is no place to go and get the milk pasteurized and it's against the law i believe to sell raw milk um, and of course there's also a lot of people who aren't able to digest that um, because it has a lot of bacteria in it there are very many complications with trying to just give raw milk out and there aren't enough processing facilities right now to have that milk pasteurized. Now, all the processing units are not shut down, but the, this decision falls in the co-ops, and the co-ops are saying, well, what's the point of having all this extra processed milk when we don't have uh, demand for it? So that brings me to the next question. Well, we know that people are not uh, going to restaurants, but a lot of people are going to grocery stores, uh, and a lot of people are saying, well, when I go to a grocery store, the stores are limiting my ability to, let's say, buy maybe uh, one gallon or two cans, or they have different limits on the amount of milk I can buy. But I would, so that one of the comments, a commentator said, well, I would like to buy a lot more. And if there is, um, instead of dumping the milk, why don't you allow me to buy it? So now we come into a, a little more uh, complicated, uh, little historic background is, is needed. So the stores uh grocery stores don't set milk prices based on the market this was news to me i didn't know that uh, they don't do that and so um they don't need to adjust the market price based on the demand um milk the selling of milk is, is a very small percentage of their overall sales and right now um grocery stores by and large are seeing a, a huge increase in their sales right because that's the that's an essential uh, business is still open people want to buy food and they're going there so uh, my understanding is that they don't need to adjust the prices according to market they haven't done that for years or decades they're not about to do that now because they don't need to make money by selling more volume you know so it's not like they need to sell more and so they're not bringing the prices down that's another question that I got why don't you I haven't seen any reduction in uh, milk prices this is not market economics. It's never been the case, uh, not for decades, especially when it comes to milk. So the price that farmers get per gallon keeps changing, but the milk price stays the same when it comes to grocery stores. So we are not going to see a decrease in milk prices anytime soon, no matter how much oversupply is dumped. It's just not going to happen. Now, why? Here's the answer. There is no incentive outside of the farm, when you look at everybody else from the co-op to the government to the stores, there is no incentive, there is no financial incentive for any other party to bring down the mark, to bring down the milk prices or to uh, fluctuate the milk prices um, to match 
the supply and demand. There's no incentive for that. No one's making money off of that. And so that is not a priority and that's not about to happen anytime soon. I hope I'm clear about that. Now, I, I don't know why. I, I, I asked Peter, I'm like, so, so it's not market prices. So these are price controls. These are government set prices. Yes, there are, there are many lobbies involved. Uh, there are many other factors. It's not, it's not like, um, he said, for example, Coca-Cola, where you have a product, you market it, there's a demand, you increase production to meet the demand. It's not like that. It doesn't work like that in the milk industry. So, okay, well, I, you can't really give it away because it's not pasteurized. Uh, you can't give it to stores. It's up to the stores to decide how much they want, how much they're going to allow customers to buy or not. You can't change the prices. Well, then what do you do with the extra milk? I mean, don't dump it. Well, back in the day, in the 1970s, all you had to do was call a number and the government would come and take it. They would come and take the extra milk and they would make cheese with it. So that's the thing. Milk has a very short shelf life. It gets bad. There are different grades of what you can make with it. You can make, like, let's say, yogurt, butter, and cheese. And cheese is the one that endures the most. So back in the day, the government could take it and would make cheese with it. Now those programs don't exist. There's no more funding for it. There's no, as I said, no incentive for it. So now you can't just call a number. No one's just gonna go in and, and take your extra supply and make cheese with it. Okay, so now that's gone. So, um, so what do you do now? Well, you dump it. That's, that's the answer. I mean, there seems to be no other way. And I, I, I find that very shocking because you know, there is, if you're wasting food, but there's just no other place for that milk to go. So we're dumping six trailer loads per week of raw milk. Hmm. So looking forward, uh, what is the solution for this? And so the solution seems to be that you have to vertically integrate your, your production. So let's say right now the Briggs Farm makes the milk and then they have to send it to the co-op. And it goes to a processing unit and then it goes uh, to the various retailers and various consumers. But if you have a vertically integrated unit where you uh, have a contract with a processing unit where you can go get it pasteurized, you have direct marketing where you can reach out to consumers, restaurants or schools or um, even door-to-door -door delivery where you actually have consumers that way you can control the supply and demand and have that match you know it can be more of a market economics point of view and then you won't have this kind of dumping so the future would be um, more and more vertically integrated operations and um, um, sort of a renaissance again of door-to-door -door, you know milkman deliveries um, where you have a relationship between the producer and the consumer. And um, now is the time, it seems, especially in the midst of this crisis, where something like this, a new innovation or sort of revisiting the past in, in a new form could be the way forward. And I find that, you know, a silver lining that I'm gonna focus on. Um, there's another thing that I'm gonna say is that the crisis right now, so Anson Tebbets is one of the secretaries um, and Peter Briggs had very good things to say about him and he's trying his best. Um, again, I don't know myself, so I'm deferring to my understanding of how the co-op, the dairy farmers in Addison County, that co-op feel about it and, and they feel like they have some government support. And um, they, they thought, they were told when they started off this year, they thought that this year is going to be the best year in, in five years because the last five years were not so good, and this year is gonna be the best of that, but it's gonna actually turn out to be the worst year in eight years. And uh, Secretary Tebbets has said that we can expect um, the, you know, this, this dumping of milk and sort of the losses by the dairy farmers to go on until August because, well, schools aren't gonna be open until then, and we don't know how long this economic shutdown is going to last. So because they started off this year with an expectation that it's gonna be the best year, um, many farms have invested in new infrastructure, you know, uh, robotics, for example, for milking cows and other aspects that you do uh, when, it, when, you know, to sustain a, a particular farm in Vermont. Now, 
again, my what I've learned is that you don't just when when uh, some equipment needs repair or maintenance, you don't just do it. You farm out your equity. You wait for a while, and when you are expecting it to be a good year, that's when you make your investment. And this was that year until the pandemic hit, and now farms are finding it very hard to to work with banks to keep keep up those loans you know you have to pay for that many far, many farms are not able to get the loans they're not able they're worried about how they're going to pay it off uh, wells fargo i saw recently said that they're not going to be working with any small businesses or farms they don't have money so it's not like they're making a, a, a decision out of malice they're just not in a position to do that and so there's a lot of hardship a lot of economic hardship looming and um, the longer the shutdown continues the longer the restaurants and schools and everything is shut down the, the economic impact the ripples of that are, are really going to be felt on Vermont's dairy farms so um, that's my uh, you know that's my understanding there's one more point that I will I will say and I think this is an important point that was emphasized over and over again and that is all right so uh, there's no government program to take away the cheese so we can't have that you can't uh you can't really pasteurize that or there's very you know there's no one to buy that so you're not doing that the the usual places where you're um where you're uh selling it are all closed well what do we do well there's still one more place i mean when it comes to grocery stores fine you know you know they're limiting the amount of supply and the prices are the same but people could still buy you know more of it like it, you know some milk can still go to the processing center it's just co-ops are saying no no we can't so they're not doing it well if more people if the demand in the grocery stores really increased um, not only for milk but also let's say locally made artisanal cheeses if that demand was there there could be a little leeway and um, the reason why that's not there uh, is because there's not been any marketing by the dairy industry for decades. Now I thought, you know, what does that mean? It's not as if just marketing, you know, if you have like those ads where it says, oh, we're having beef for dinner and, you know, pushing beef. You don't, what, you don't have to have ads pushing butter or cheese. I mean, people will buy that if they need it. I didn't, I just, I wasn't understanding the importance of marketing, but apparently it has a role. Apparently this has been, a complaint that the farmers have had for a very long time where they've said well we need different avenues to um, sell our products to market it to put it right front and center of the consumers and say hey listen why don't you include you know your cheeses and and yogurt and our various dairy products why don't you include that in your dinner now that you're cooking more and more at home why don't you think about us in that way um, and there's been a real need for extra marketing that that dairy farmers have called for but not had it um, neither is the co-ops nor their groups like dfa dairy farmers of america or the government they've just not they've they've really wanted to do some marketing but they've not been able to do it and this has been a complaint that's been going on for decades and now today a lot of them are saying look we're not able to get the message across and so at every level, uh, there's there's a failure for us to get our product in front of consumers. And so now we are forced to dump it, and we're dumping it six trailer loads of milk a week. So, um, yes, that's, that's pretty much it. That uh, I, I hope that answers all your questions about it. If you have any more, um, please write to me at info at Hansen, H-A-N-S-E-N, for Vermont spelled out, dot com. And I'm, I'm sorry I took a week to get to it, but I, you know, broke it down and I think I've made it clear. But again, if I have, if you have any questions, I'd be happy to follow up on it tomorrow. And I'll have more news about COVID with more cases. Um, and yes, about, I think there's about 600 cases, at, but no more, more deaths. And um, we'll just uh, continue at it. I'll be here again tomorrow from 6 to 6.30 answering your questions, um, responding to your comments. So I'll see you then. Thank you.